is good, YouTube? Quinn Wade Basketball Analysis coming to you on a quick video. I wanted to let you guys know I got some new merchandise available, not just t-shirt anymore. I got different type of t-shirts, different type of shirts and logos that you can purchase on my spread shirt and also hoodies now. We have expanded and added more to the channel and more merchandise for the brand. Thanks for supporting. It will be in the description and the links will be in the comment section below. Thanks for helping me and supporting the movement. Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. I'm going to check out the video. What's good, YouTube? Quinn Wade, Basketball Analysis. Coming to y'all the video. We're going to talk about Carmelo Anthony after he has been traded from the Houston Rockets. Gave up on him. They really wanted him. They they made it a priority to get Carmelo as soon as he got waived by the Atlanta Hawks. They quickly dove in to sign him to a contract. He plays a couple games for them. Doesn't look like the old Melo. Not really um, the most consistent shooter anymore. He likes to isolate, but he, he just don't have the explosiveness in his first step. His jump shot is not as good as it used to be. Um, and that really has hurt him because you would think that he had age and become an elite shooter, um, especially an elite three-point shooter because he was able to fix that throughout his career and get better at the three-point line. So you would think that that would be a direction that he will automatically think he will go in to prolong his career is to be a great spot-up shooter. He tried that in OKC. He tried it in Houston, and it just didn't work. Um, and that's unfortunate because I really wanted to see Carmelo do good. I, he, he was a player that was very exciting. But when you look at his three-point shooting with the Knicks, he never was really a great three-point shooter outside of really two seasons. Uh, well, three seasons. He shot 42% in um, 10 and 11. He shot 12, 37% uh, uh, in 12 and 13. And in 13, 14, he shot 40% on four threes. So you think that... He will eventually figure it out and become a great three-point shooter, especially playing with players like Chris Paul and James Harden, Russell Westbrook that can create shots for you and take attentions off of you and give you open and easy looks. You'll think that that's something that he'll master um, as he got older when he loses his explosiveness and his ability to beat people off the dribble and pull up on people. Um, he just doesn't have the bounce. He just doesn't have the lift that he used to have early New York and Denver days where he can just, you know, jab, step you, jab, step you, and just basically put you in a triple threat position. And the fact that he's not a great passer, that hurts him too because he doesn't facilitate the ball or he doesn't really help make his teammates better. That was always something in his career that me, people really harped on was he's not a great defender. I'll get into that later. But he's also not a great playmaker. He can score. He can put the ball in the basket, but he doesn't really do much else outside of rebounding. And the fact that that caught up to him. Now he's barely an NBA player at this point because he honestly can't shoot threes at a consistent level. Um, and at the end of the day, he can't get to the paint anymore. He, his physicality doesn't matter because his athleticism is gone. His bounce is gone. So he can't just, you know, try to go in there and finish or beat you off the dribble because he just don't have it anymore. And the fact that he can't do the jab step because he, he, he what is he going to do? You're not scared of him going to the paint. You're not scared of him posting you up. And if he is going to face you up, you'll live with it because he's not as explosive coming off his jumper anymore because he used to hit you quick and just pop you. But now it's slower. And sometimes he fades now to create the space. He had fade a little bit to create space. And now he's shooting over defenders um, instead of just, you know, sizing them up and getting a quick look at the basket. Now, he has to try harder to create shots. And even when he was in Oklahoma City, I seen him really have to work for each basket that he wanted to score. And I feel like that was just the end of him right then and there. I feel like he still was an NBA player. I feel like he was solid in OKC. I actually think he was a little underrated when you look at the numbers early in the season. Uh, once Andre Robinson, Andre Robertson went down, his numbers started to plummet that as they used him more. And they took a lot of his shots away, too, depending on what month you look at. But to me, he had a decent um, year in OKC last year. It just, you know, people blamed him instead of everybody else. When you look at the Utah series, he played terrible, but so did Russell and Paul George, in my opinion. But when you look at um, uh, his, his career, he averaged 18 points a game 
um, in January. And, and if you look at December, he had some decent times. In December and November, he averaged 17. And then in October, he was averaging 23 points a game. So I feel like the, the biggest thing he had to get adjusted to was playing off the ball. Um, and he never could really figure that out. And that really hurt his value. The fact that he doesn't bring much to the table. And then you look at it on the defensive end, he's a liability. He never been a great defender. He never really put a lot of effort and energy in being a great defender. Only time he really tried to be a great defender was in the Lakers series when they lost to them in the Western Conference Finals. And that's the perfect time to do it because you're so close to going to the NBA Finals. Of course, you're going to want to play harder. Of course, you're going to want to do more because you have a chance to win a championship. But outside of that, he never really was a great defender. He never really put the, enough effort and energy to become one. But I think the thing about this is it just shows you that it's not too many suitors for Carmelo because the Rockets held on to him. They didn't let him play. Um, they even paid cash to get rid of him. It's like they traded Carmelo in cash to the Bulls just to get rid of that contract. And the Bulls is obviously going to waive him. It just lets you know that they was doing whatever they could to get rid of that contract. And they did save a couple million trading Carmelo. So it made sense to trade him, um, then waive him. Um, and that's what they ended up doing. But they didn't even let him play. They didn't even let him really be a part of the team. And on top of that, they even spent money to get rid of his contract. So it show you how low and, and how dark things have gotten for Carmelo Anthony um at this point so we'll see what happens they say that the lakers are trying to cut somebody to make room for carmelo i think they're really doing that just like the chris paul thing to really try him out and, and do it because lebron you know going to vouch for his his friend and vouch for his brother and you know that might get him another roster spot but if he really doesn't fit or he really doesn't change or show improvement in his game, I don't really see him staying on a Lakers roster because they already got players like Beasley and Ingram and Kuzma and LeBron that's already eaten up a lot of those four minutes. And Beasley, you know, he's probably better than Carmelo at this point, and he doesn't really even play that much when they're healthy. Um, so I don't really see the minutes that can really go to Carmelo. To me, if he goes to Los Angeles, he's, he's not going to play just like he did in Houston because none of those players he should be playing – any minutes over or even getting minutes unless they're injured and Beasley just now got minutes because of the injuries he wasn't even playing at all to the point where people thought he was going to get bought out until the injuries happened and now he get more minutes so I definitely don't see him working out with the Lakers and that gives you the question should Carmelo retire it's kind of crazy to be saying that considering that he's only 34 years old ain't like he's 38 39 years old hanging on to the end of his career He's at a position where he still should be a solid player. And I feel like he did that in Houston. With the minutes, he had a lot of bad shooting games. And he had some games where he was hot and was on fire. Um, like I said, his jump shot is really his bread and butter at this point. But considering that he played 10 games and he only started two, he gave you 40% uh, from the field, 32 from three, 68 from the free throw line. But he gave you five rebounds and um, 13 points in those 29 minutes. That's a lot of minutes for him, considering that he is a defensive liability. And he wasn't really shooting the ball that well from anywhere, even the free throw line. So what are you really getting out of Carmelo Anthony at this point? I think that's the biggest question right now. It's not about his defense. It's not about his scoring. Why do I want Carmelo Anthony on my team? And I think that's the reason why he stayed out so long is – what, what does he bring to the table besides, like, do you look for him for re leadership? He, he, he's not he's not a defender. He's not a great three-point shooter. He's not a great scorer. He's not great in isolation anymore. And plus, he, he's coming off those knee surgeries. So, like, why at this point, why is I'm trading? Why is I'm trying to get Carmelo? What does he bring to the table? What does he offer at the seat? Um, and right now, it's nothing. I have literally, as a person that defended him and as a person that really wanted him to do well in Houston, as a person that said that he will find a home, hopefully, this year and be able to contribute, you will think that this will eat him up. You will think that this will make him want to play harder. You think he'll give a chip on his shoulder. But in his situation, at his age, um, under his circumstances, He's not going to get major minutes. He's not going to have a major role. He's no longer a big three player, a big four player. He's my, I don't even think he's a starter at this point. So 
is either he's going to come in and and try to play a role or he's just going to have to retire because he has no role. And I think that's the reality of the Carmelo situation. What does he bring to the table? What can he do for my team? And is he even worth a roster spot? I got a lot of people that's coming up with the buyout. You, I'd rather have a, a veteran that's already better than Carmelo take that roster spot. Like if I'm the Lakers, is a lot of upcoming free agents from overseas because their their season is almost over. Plus the buyout candidates. If I get a roster spot and I waive somebody that's deserving of a roster spot for Carmelo, I can get a better free agent than that a week or two weeks from now i'd rather just wave somebody now and just get somebody else two weeks from now than to give it to carmelo just to try him out when you can get a player that already has an established role that you can fill him in like we see with kenneth free to austin rivers at least they can play at least they still have nba talent and they actually bring rebounding and ability to score on and off the ball and, and that skill says that's perfect for today basketball so I don't really know what they're going to get out of Carmelo. I don't really know what you want him to do at this point. I don't even know what he brings to the table at this point. But let me know what you guys think. Is Carmelo over? Is he done? What can he do? What can he bring to the table? Is he worth a roster spot? Is he even going to play if he gets a roster spot? And what can he do? Do you think he should just try to be a three-point sharpshooter? Or do you think that he should just be an off-the-ball guy, a guy that can run around and come off screens and knock down elbow jumpers and threes? He couldn't do it in Houston as a spot-up shooter. He couldn't even do it in OKC when he was a little younger. Um, he, he doesn't have it anymore, and it's sad because I wanted to see him continue to play, but it looks like his NBA career is dwindling to the point where, you know, only the Bulls will take on his contract, and it took cash to do it. So we'll see what happens. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Should Carmelo retire? Should he um, try to give it this last year, or is he done for good? Um, the, the, these last two stints really damaged his image. It damaged his reputation, um, and it damaged his status in the league. As now he's a guy that you know is not a highly valued, coveted player anymore. He's a player that's getting slandered. He's a player that people don't believe in, and he's getting a lot of they they kicking him way down. He, this is a lowest point of his career, and it's unfortunate that he's going out like this. But I really don't really see what you're going to get out of him. So I'm not going to bully him. I'm not going to talk trash about him. I still respect him as a player. I still think he's a Hall of Famer. But this might just be it. And I don't see why the Lakers will waive somebody when they don't need another forward. They don't need him. He doesn't break anything that they need at all at this point. So what is I'm really waving somebody else for to get Carmelo if I'm not going to really need or use him anywhere, anymore? Any, I mean, for anything. What do I need him for? So... Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Check out my website, analysisplayground.com. Link in the description, comment section below. Check out my Facebook page, analysisplayground.com. Like on Facebook to show support. Thanks for supporting the Facebook page. Thanks for supporting the website. Thanks for buying merchandise. Also, I make videos just like this every single day about trades, free agency, buyouts, NBA draft, the season preview, and I do fun videos also. And I also break down NBA footage, Quinn Wade, basketball up analysis. I'm gone. I enjoy making these videos. You, you guys enjoy watching as I continue to go. And let me know what you guys think in the comment section below.